Hey everybody, welcome back to Origami Twist. Today we're going to make the least intimidating paper rose that you could ever find. It's really straightforward. All you need is a pair of scissors, a dowel or a pen or something with a small circumference to wrap the petals around, three cardstock circles. I use the Sizzix uh, circle die, but you could use a even the cap to a hairspray container whatever you've got around, but you'll need three identical circles. And then you're going to need a liquid adhesive of some sort. I'm using glossy accents today because I find that when it dries, it looks a lot like um, droplets of water. So if you can end up seeing it, it doesn't really matter too much with this particular one. Uh, you could use the Tombow liquid glue or you could even use Elmer's glue for this one. Whatever you've got around. All we have to do now is create the petals and we're going to fold each circle in half and then you're going to take the bottom edge of that crescent and bring it up to about the one-third mark and lightly crease and then turn the paper over and do the same thing bring it up to the edge there and you want to move it around until both or all three of these little almost triangles, look like pizza slices, are about the same size. It's really important that they are roughly the same size so that each one of these segments matches. The three, three segments there. That's because we're going to cut all of the blossoms at the same time. So you want to be able to go through all three layers, sort of like when you made those paper snowflakes in school. Back in the day. So we're going to cut in about a third to a half the way up the little pizza slice there and cut out a teardrop shape. Now this is sculptural so you kind of go with with your gut on this one, you know, what you like the shape of. You do want it to be round rather than, you know, rectangular but for the, for the more natural look but it's totally up to you. And then if you find that the petals need to be shaped a little bit more, you can always trim them and shape them a little bit afterwards. So now you have what looks like a six-sided flower, or six-petaled flower, and I made a couple of extra before. And I'm going to trim in a little bit towards the center. Now you don't want to go all the way into the center because if you do, your petals will fall off. Uh, but you also want to make sure you're going in far enough so that when you are building your flower you can actually bring the petals up and have that centerpiece be relatively small. So we're going to do the same on each one of those. So we've got three. As of this stage, all three are the same. We're at least close to the same. Same concept anyway. And one more. Now I've done a lot of research on paper flowers or paper roses and I've been intimidated by them because they're such a beautiful what appears to be complicated shape that I wanted to I wanted to do the rose justice you know what as I was creating them I wanted it to look like I'm an artist and to be able to have anybody make these and look like an artist you know so what I've decided to do is put a little dab of glue right in the center of one of the flowers and then offset the second set of petals. So by offset I mean rather than laying it directly on top, turn it a little bit. There you go, so now it looks like you've got 12 petals there, see? And then for the last one put a very tiny drop of glue there in the center because you'll want the, the center one to be able to fold up very, very um, close. So you don't want to accidentally glue all the petals all the way down. And then you once again line them up and then turn slightly so that they're nearly matching the petals on the bottom. And then you're going to let that dry. If you're making a whole bunch of these all at the same time, 
go to, to this stage, get them all glued, set it aside, make the next one. And then when you go to shape them, they'll all, you know, the first one will be dry. So by the time you get to the last one, it will also be dry. It's really good if you're doing um, an assembly line for a wedding. Okay, once you have, once your glue has dried enough to work with, you're then going to take your dowel or your, oops, I missed one. Your dowel or your pen, and you're going to wrap one of the petals around the dowel. Now you can do this by hand if you don't have a dowel, that's okay. But the first two, you want to be really, 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 you can see that on its side. You want it to be a really tight roll. And then you're going to go to the one that's opposite and do exactly the same thing again. Roll that petal up and then keep rolling it so that it creates almost a uh, cylinder, but not quite. You're then going to apply a little bit of glue and this this first part is that center of that rose which is a key to the shape of it so you're going to put a little bit of glue on each of the I don't know what you call that burrito <laughs> looking things the little uh, tacos that you created and you're going to bring them together and have them hug each other and then hold it until they are glued together enough that you feel comfortable letting go and moving on to the next step. Okay, first step is finished. You're then going to pick three blossoms. Hmm, I think I'll go with these three. And you're going to do the same thing. You're going to wrap it around the dowel. But this time, not nearly as much as you did with the last one, or the last two. So you want them to be shaped curved up, but not, not completely cylindrical. You're then going to take your fingernail, or your fing the tip of your finger, and bend back the top of each of the petals of those three. And now here's where the sculpture part comes in. You're going to give each petal a piece of, a little bit of glue. And press the petals together so they form a little triangle around that center part. Now at this stage, you can probably see it's starting to look like a rose. And once again, you keep pressing and uh, you know sculpt, sculpting it until you're happy with the shape and until it stays where you want it to stay. So again, if you're doing assembly line style, do a whole bunch of them to this point, and then by the time you get back to the first one, it should be dry enough to go to the next step. Now the next step is up to you. It depends on how sculptured you want the rest of your flower to be. I've gone with less sculptured on this one, but if you want it to be more organic, you, don't, you just play with each of the petals a little bit more. So you can, again, fold it up on the dowel, but not, not nearly as much as the, second, as the next one, and then Again, folding that back or using your finger to fold back each of the petals. So wrapping the next lot of petals around. Now there's nothing wrong with trimming one of the petals off. If you find that it doesn't fit properly with the flower, it's completely up to you. This is your rose and you can make it look however you like. That's one of my favorite things about it. Okay, once you've curled the petals to the shape you like, just give it another dab of glue on each of them. And again, I love the glossy accents because it does look a bit like water once it's dry. 
So if it shows, no big deal. Just looks more organic. And then I'm going to just come up and sort of press with my fingers and sculpt the rose into shape. So once again, holding it there in the shape that you like until it's set enough to stay. Isn't that amazing? It's just cause sort of coming into place. And as long as you've got that center bit organized, it's just, just gorgeous and really, really straightforward. Surprisingly straightforward. And then that bottom one, that last set of flowers, it's the same thing, rolling the petals around. Your dowel, I find that if it's small, the, the diameter of the dowel, you're going to have more luck with this. But use what you've got. Don't need to go out and buy anything fancy for this. It's really straightforward. I've actually seen a lot of examples of roses done with newspaper, which is interesting. You could paint some, maybe some watercolor onto the newspaper and the words give it a really neat look. Uh, so, you know, get creative, use what you've got. That's part of the beauty of this. And there you go. So we're just going to hold it in place. Now I've got some leaves here from a fake flower, but you could certainly cut some out of um, construction paper and just, you know, play with the paper a little bit or, or uh, cardstock and play with the paper a bit until it so, sort of takes on an organic shape. And that's it. You've made a paper rose. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you give it a try. Please click like below if you love videos like this and would like to see more. And uh, as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you guys have a great day and we'll see you on Wednesday for Inspiration Wednesday. Uh, take care guys, see ya.